everybody, it's Sam Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This kickstarts my Easter series 2019. So this is the third series now for Easter projects. So I will share in the other playlists of projects that I've done. There's lots of fun ones and um, yeah, I hope you enjoy them. So to kickstart this week, I thought I would do a gift bag because the idea is I'm going to make some bits that can go in this gift bag or alternatively you can just use it for one big Easter egg or something like that anyway well I say big Easter egg just like a nice sized one so this is my bunny rabbit gift bag you can see there it is rather large <laughs> if I go that way you can't get it all in frame but it's kind of like punch art which is where you use your punches to create the shape so I've used dies more so than actual actually no I've used no yeah dies more than punches oh no I've used punches for the little kind of cheeks there but how cute is this the die set at the top is one of the first edition unicorn dies and I will share that one with you because I've changed it up a bit to have a little kind of floral headband with this lovely little bunny and then on the side you come around like actually if I do it that way because it does stand up here's your handle I've got it on brad so you can move the handle to get the product in so if I move that one or gift should I say product <laughs> and then it will slide out and there's loads of room inside this one I've got a little tail on the back I do want to get a bigger one I want to I'm going to do a pom-pom I want a really big little bunny tail on the back there now I've got a few little kind of creases in the cardstock on this one because I did try doing that and then I thought no that looks awful <laughs> so I'm going to probably put some decorative paper then over this I might just leave it I'm not sure it's not really going to matter too much but this here is you can see the size of the easter egg that this one fits this is a Thornton's one um, this is just one that I've borrowed just for this video but it is 150 grams in terms of size let me just grab my ruler just so again you can get an idea so this is four and a half by seven by five okay so I think that's kind of your standard gift size Easter egg I know there are other huge ones as well but you can see there it does fit in really nicely even with that handle there and then you can just carry it like so pop some tissue over it if you want to but I love this I think it's really nice and um, just a nice way to make your own gift bags for Easter. So I will share a really fun tutorial I done last year of a little rabbit or bunny and a chick and they were gift bags and they're really nice as well. So do check out that one because you might like that as well for other ideas and you can put little chocolates in that. But this is what we're going to make today. Really, really easy and um, you can make this any size as well, which you will find out. Okay, so once again, we are using the trusty X-Cut Circle Cutter. So we're going to be using that one again today. Then you are going to need, it's mainly A4 cardstock for the actual main base, but then I found that using 12 by 12 in terms of length worked well for the inside case. So this kind of bit here is separate. And this bit I'm actually going to shrink down. So this here is five inches wide. I'm going to shrink my one down to three inches wide. I don't know, I just feel that maybe it might be a bit better half the size, but it's entirely up to you. If you want it for this kind of gift, then that's great. Keep it at this length, and those measurements will be in my blog, but it's basically six inches wide, and you do half an inch score line on each of the longer sides. So half, yeah, so six inches by 12, and you'd need two of those. But once we get to that bit, you'll see how I've done it, and you'll be able to change that up accordingly. So what we're gonna do first of all, because I will go through the scoring for those pieces and the kind of inner case once we get to it. I want to get straight into making the fun stuff, so the actual bunny shape itself, because I found it's easier to do that first, decorate it all and everything, and then put it together right at the very end. So you're going to need cardstock that's a little bit larger than eight inches. So yeah, eight and a quarter is RA4 width and eight and a half if you're anywhere else. So that's why I found A4 to be okay. So this is just an off cut piece, but I'm hoping I'm gonna get one of them out of this. So you just wanna bring your circle cutter to eight inches. Let me just check that that was correct. Yeah. Again, it's entirely up to you. If you've got a dinner plate or anything, anything you might go really, really large. Um, you just need to then make sure you've got enough paper when we come to, to making that in, inside piece. But um. Otherwise, you know, you can go really small. You might want to do some nice dinky size ones. So once you see how easy this is to put together, then you can, like I said, change that up. So I'm just going to sit this in the middle. If you 
push it down it's raised and it allows you to move this in place and just hover it over the top. I just want to make sure that it's going to cut all within that section. I think I might need to go across just a little bit there. And just check there. Yep, yeah, so then just pop it all down. I'm going to cut that out. And you want to do two of these. I've gone just off there, but that can go on the bottom anyway. It should. I think I can get away with that. I think that one you're not going to notice. So that's fine. I'm still going to keep that one. So you need two pieces of them. Okay, so I've got my two large circles. So one's going to be for the front of the body and one for the back. Then you need another piece for the face. So this piece measures, this is five diameter, so you want to bring it down to the five there. The very bottom one is four, and then there's six, so in between there's a slightly um, higher line there. You just want to pop it at five. And again, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to fit it. Yeah, it will bring it out that way a little bit and come down. And you just want to cut that one out. So whatever you've got that is kind of those sizes, is is fine so if you like i said you're using a dinner plate for the body and then a side plate or a saucer for the head then that will be fine and you can already see now keep the one for the back did i have a preference yeah i'm gonna put that one at the back um you can see now how we're getting our shape now this reminds me what was in star star wars what's that thing i can't remember what he's called it come to me during this tutorial but yeah it looks like that so if you've got anybody that likes that you can also do that or a snowman if you put it higher up like that or just like that there you go okay so we're going to stick this one like so then i've got all these bits here now i have gone and done all this because otherwise we'd be here for ages but for his little paws I've got these two here. Now I have gone around and distressed everything and I'm gonna do that on the white. The only reason being, because I'm putting some parts where it's white on white, I found it getting a bit lost. So I have distressed the edges very slightly using the pumice stone distressed oxide. That is completely optional, you don't need to do that. But I did find that it did just kind of lift these things kind of off that white background a little bit you can see it's just ever so slightly distressed around the face there so you will see me doing that but it is optional these here are from my bring everything in here the fancy stitched ovals these are the tonic studio ones if you've got these i have used the oh check which size it was yeah so one two three four five it's the sixth largest and it is the one with the actual scalloped edge there okay so i die cut two of them and they are going to go like this okay then i die cut these two in a pinky color and these are the one two three the fourth smallest okay and they're going to go towards the bottom like that and again i've distressed the outsides of these with this is the stamping up um, powder pink so again if you've got that again you don't have to again again <laughs> it's entirely up to you then to do the kind of face and the features this is the build a unicorn die it's lovely i will share a little tutorial up here where i made a unicorn bag so anybody that hasn't seen that one it's really lovely but i thought it would be nice to change it slightly and use it for the rabbit so i'm using the eyelashes here and I've gone ahead and die cut those so there's one there and there is another one there's that one there okay like so then I have die cut all these flowers so these ones and these ones and I have made up all these lovely bits here so I've got one two one in the middle and then these ones either side like that and then these are the some of them are the leaves from this exact set so these here like that and that's these ones and this one so there's the horn so you know you can use this for lots of other animals and then I've just die cut these extra leaves which I'm going to nestle in around all of that then I've die cut these pink circles here and I've done six so three on each foot and these I believe are half an inch no actually they are three quarters of an inch so but it's entirely up to you again what sizes you want to use your feet might be bigger or smaller than what I've chose to do but you can see there how they're coming together just realize none of that is in frame so let's bring that down so you can see 
exactly what it was I'd done. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm going to go through the ears in a minute. Then these are what's going to be for the cheeks, which I've already gone ahead again and just distressed, and I'll do that around this and this in a moment. But they are going to go either side, like so. Now, to make the teeth, I've just got a piece here which is about one inch wide. Um, I'm going to just trim that down so it's about one inch high as well, slightly off, but you can see what I'm doing. Then I'm bringing in this fine liner and I'm just going to draw a black line. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit thicker or crooked. Believe it or not, these things add character. So by doing a bigger gap, it will just change the character of the, the little bunny, like so. Okay, so now that, I don't want to rub my black, but that's going to go there. Those two are going to go over the top. And just by distressing the edges, you can see it's just lifted off of this white a little bit better. I might add a little bit more on there. Then for the mouth and the, sorry, the tongue and the nose, just got a little bit of the same colour here. And you see by changing the way the eyes go look like that, it looks really kind of almost a bit solemn, a little bit sad. If you take it further out, changes the look completely. If you go close together and higher, but I like it quite straight slightly just kind of flicking up at the back the outer side like so bring it apart a little bit more actually like that and then once we add the rest you'll see and once we add the ears as well so then for this piece here you just want to very roughly just freehand I'll cut that like that I'm probably using way too big scissors but this is to make the tongue you just want to cut something that shape okay and then that is going to slide underneath the teeth now the last one I done last year I put the tongue over the teeth so you can imagine obviously that's not possible but it looked quite funny unless you've got they were bottom teeth then it's okay I've cut three strips of this silver mirrored cardstock you could use some vellum or you can use some grey but I thought you know usually whiskers are quite clear aren't they quite transparent so I'm going to cut that in half so these are now they're literally like a few millimetre wide by three inches long. I'm going to curl them up and they will be stuck on each of those little kind of cheeks there, like so. Okay, so that's those bits. I'll do that one there as well. And then for the nose, just using that same piece, I'm going to bring in some of my snips here. And you just want to do a half circle. Now the size is entirely up to you. The bigger, again, the smaller, it will just change the character of the bunny. It's a little bit wonky, but again, I guess it doesn't really matter. I think that's okay. There we go. And that is going to sit just over the top of the cheeks. And it's once you start adding these pieces that start to bring his little face or her little face together. You see now? Next, we want to make the ears. So I've got some cardstock here. Um, again, there's no real kind of exact, it's entirely up to you, so all I've done is just kind of this, <laughs> so you can just copy, I'll give you a rough of the um, measurements of the height, so like that, and then like that, and then you can just use this one now to trace around the other one, there you go, there's my ear. This is got a width of, say two inches would be fine, mine's slightly under one and seven eighths of an inch and it is height wise seven inches, bang on. Then if you just pop that down over here and then with a pencil, just draw around it or just go and do it freehand again. So, you know, if you don't need any special tools to make this project really, you can just use a ruler draw around any kind of, like I said, saucers and just dinner plates and stuff. And then just cut that one out. Okay, so there's my ears. Now also by making them quite large and maybe wider, it just makes it more dramatic and you've got like a floppy eared bunny, because you can see there one of them I've curled over. So you could really round off the edges and not have them so pointy like me. There's Those will really change the characteristics of the, the bunny itself. Then you just want to do the kind of I guess 
the inner ear, the ear lobe, whatever that bit is, the, the, the skin coloured part. So this piece here, I'm going to do, that was say two inches, so this is going to be one inch wide or thereabouts. And you just want to do exactly the same again, but this time slightly shorter. So let's start there and then come down like so. And you can see now how that's going to sit inside and give you your ear. And I'm just going to pop that one here and just quickly cut around that one. Okay, so now once that sticks down, you can see that one's going to go behind. In fact, these are slightly bigger, so it would be interesting to see how this one turns out from the other one, and that one's going to go on there. So I'm going to go and get this all stuck down, finish just dressing it, and then I will come back and show you how I finish with the headband. Okay, so there is my little bunny and her face, or his face, and now I'm going to start bringing in all the flowers for the headpiece. So I've got my glue gun on here, and I'm going to start off with this one right in the middle, grab another glue stick ready, and just start kind of building up these flowers first. See how quickly that came together and then I'm just going to start nestling in these ones. I did pull them all down so they're a little bit shorter and then I'll probably add in a few more leaves as and when. So this will be a little bit different to the other one. So I'm just going to put a little bead of glue And there is my headpiece. So it's a lot fuller. I bring in this one. You can see the difference there. I think they both look really nice. You can see slightly different looking face as well. So yeah, everyone will probably be slightly different, but I think that's quite nice. So now you've got that piece, you'll have your piece for the back. So now we can move on to putting it all together with the case. Okay, so this is now where it's up to you how wide do you want to go. So I'm now going to do my width of my bag to be three inches. So you want a piece of four inches wide by 12 inches in length. Now you can have a four length or even 11 inches length because once again you see how I put it together. You just basically want to create a long length of card to be able to wrap around which is why I've got the two pieces here. So four by 12 and you're going to score at half an inch and three and a half inches and that's if you want to make the bag the size that I'm going to do now. If you want to do the one I've done before then you want two pieces of six by twelve and score at half an inch and five and a half and that will give you your five and your five inch width so it will give you this larger style here. Again you might want to do a different size again you might want to go very small you might be doing even larger it's entirely up to you but you will need two pieces 
of 4 by 12 if you're following me today and then for the handle I've got a piece of one and a half by 12 so I actually got all of this from one piece of 12 by 12 and I had a little bit extra which again I've used for other parts of the the bunny okay if you use the larger size then you'd only get two pieces you'd have to cut your handle separate but you might want to use ribbon or something okay so what you want to do is on one of the pieces actually I just remembered just on one of them this is just purely a guide we just want to score and find my we want to score at one inch okay so just on one of them and that's just where we're going to be gluing so on the one um yeah on this one where we've just done that score line don't fold or burnish or anything but just cut the tiny little rectangles from each side away like so okay then what you want to do is just you want to make little notches so if I just start cutting you can see the shape I'm creating it might be easier to actually see rather than tell you so this is the shape you want to create so basically I'm kind of going along half an inch three quarters of an inch so leave that and then I'm going in at an angle and then another angle and cutting out a triangle shape which gives me these tabs okay so again just come down I find half an inch three quarters of an inch is is good um, an inch just maybe a bit too much you can go sh by all means go smaller and this will just basically allow us to be able to wrap the case around the circular shape of the bunny without getting any kind of like buckling and stuff like that you'll get a much smoother curved case so there you can see the shape so I've got some that one's a bit bigger than that one it doesn't matter as long as you've got them you know under an inch then I think that will work flip it over and do the same again okay so that's that piece there and you'll have this kind of bit at the end and then with that other piece you want to do exactly the same again so this time you're doing it on the full length because we don't have that piece that we scored so just go along and do exactly the same again okay so you'll now have two pieces like this one with this piece and one just straight with all of those little notches taken out and then you've got your handle piece as well okay what I would say to do next is if you imagine in a minute we're going to stick that over that so it becomes one long piece so that whole piece will stick there so these ends here so this opposite end to this one I want to just have my handle will be slightly behind it and then I'm going to have a brad now this I think is easier to do if you put it over the top like that so you can see actually I'm bringing it down about an inch and you want it just in the center there but I find this easiest to punch a hole through when it's like this rather than when it's all put together so I'm just going to come in here and just actually what I'll do is punch a hole in this first and then come down about half an inch and then what's going to happen is I've got these brads I'm going to put it inside just so you can't see it and that will go I'm not going to I'm going to take this off I'm not doing that bit now but I just found doing the whole punch easier to do while it's all flat so that one will be like that and you can see how this is going to come around so now this end here I'm going to do the same just punch and punch it's not so much the handle the handle you can do before or after but you just kind of get that all ready and then you can see that one will go through there as well but I'm going to take this one back off because you don't want that on but it was just one thing to do I try and do as much of those bits before you put it all together because it just makes it a bit easier so now you just want to just fold in all of these tabs okay so now I'm going to add flip this one over I'm just going to pop some glue onto this one inch by three inch piece this kind of bigger tab and flip this one over so you want so all your bits are facing in the right way and just slot that over there line it up with the score line just hold that in place a minute while it sets okay so now you can see this is really easy to kind of maneuver and curl 
It's up to you which one you want to start on first. I'm going to start on the front. So you flip this over, okay? And this, you've got to imagine you can see the join there, but you want to be able to faintly see that folded bit, you know, where it's folded over, that one inch section. You want to have that right down in the middle. So that one inch section I'm going to have right between his feet here, okay? And I'm going to just add glue to that tab so that first one and just get that stuck in place first it will make life much easier if you just get that one stuck down and you want to bring it right down to the very outer side or edge there of the circle okay so there's the tab just holding that down okay so I totally forgot that actually I'd ended up trimming some off the 12 inch length so I've just taken off two and three quarters so say three inches, so you actually only need it to be nine inches long. So um, yeah, apologies there. I will put a little note in at the beginning so that you've got it all ready. So now you, yours should be coming around about there, just kind of an, about an inch and a half down from his head. That's if you've used the same measurements as me. So this, you may want that fuller length if you're doing something bigger, but you can see here now, we're gonna stick all of that in there and follow this ring here. So I'm just going to fold it over and just pop glue on all of them. So we just hold it like I am so you can get into all of those tabs. So it's a little bit fiddly, but it is easy. Okay, bring it back down and then just work your way around kind of holding them all down with as many fingers as you've got and just make sure that you hog it right up to the very outer edge of that circle and once one kind of grips on then you can start moving the rest so that is all stuck down there so I just need to cut off another two and three quarters actually I'll just use this piece here so if you did not see my little adjustment in the tutorial and you're here with the same 12 inches just do what I'm doing here it just means you have to hole punch the holes in but it's not the end of the world and I'm just going to cut a very neat line like so that's not bad going and then again, you just want to get in there with some glue on those first tabs, which is a little bit fiddly, but if you've got any little glue sticks that you can put glue on the end of, or a little cotton bud, just to feed it in there on those tabs that might be a bit difficult. But as long as the majority of them stick down anyway, it's not the end of the world if the odd one it isn't. Again, just make sure that they're all stuck down. Each time, really making sure, I just bring this up, that you hog that outside, like so. And then you want them to both kind of be the same distance when you get to the top, okay? So that's that one. So now, it's entirely up to you how you want to do this, but you just basically want to put glue on all of them, and then this is going to stick over and you want to go in underneath with your hands so it is I guess I get well it's less mess if you do all of them at once because you might have to lift it up so I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on all of these you could use double sided tape obviously it would be quite time consuming having to cut and put it all on all these little bits or you could put a long strip on and then cut into it and just go and peel off them all so maybe try that as well whatever's best for you so like so and then i'm going to start from the bottom kind of bring around the top there because it's now resting on there you you can kind of just go around and because i'm using the wet glue i can just kind of tack it down while i work my way around but again, you just want to make sure that it's all concealed just slightly inside of that circular shape. And this glue dries nice and hard, so the good thing is, is although this is a little bit fiddly initially, once that glue does take, that's it, you're done. Okay, so there you have 
your gift bag. Now personally I prefer this slightly smaller width than the other one but um, yeah I mean both work really well but I just think I prefer that one. Now to balance it out because what you'll find, just realise that's come out a little bit there, let's just pull that up like so. If you have gone over a little bit there, can you see I have? His towel's now going to cover that anyway so I'm not too worried. Okay so I've just got this little oval die cut and I'm basically going to stick that so it's slightly overhanging so it becomes the same height so when we go and stick it down you want to hold your gift bag up so that basically that acts as like a little stand for the feet to kind of rest against so I'm going to just pop some glue on half of it it's only actually a little bit overhanging so I'm just going to pop it down because I can move this around then stand it up Oh, I think I got it spot on first time round. There we go, that'll do. So it's, again, it's going to be different for everybody, but mine's overhanging by about half an inch. Make sure it's nice and centred, which that is. And I'm going to cover that with a big, lovely white pom-pom anyway. But that, you need that so that then your bag can stand up as it does. Okay. So whilst that's drying, then I can come back in and hole punch. So like I said, you can do it like this, but it was just a bit easier to do it when everything's flat like so and then you can have your handle on the outside or the inside I prefer it on the inside so I'm just going to take my brad split that and there's that one again you might choose to go over, do one inch it's up to you I just found again one and a half worked quite well especially if you're going to have like lots of chocolates inside they can be quite heavy but once I've added my pom-pom on the back there is our bunny gift bag and I just love that from the front when you look at it like that you wouldn't know what it is it stands up perfectly these look great if you've got a little Easter tree which I know some people do um, or you like to put all the kind of little eggs and everything together or if you're going to have a little party and some people these could be little gift bags like I said mini ones will look gorgeous as well but how good is that? So apart from that kind of mishap with the measurement there, I think they've turned out really well and I think very easy. So there you have it. They don't look too different actually, maybe a li little bit so, but I hope you like them. I hope you like this first tutorial for this year's Easter series. I've got some really fun projects to share with you this year. Please, as always, share them over on Mixed Up Crafters. I'd love to see your variations of this. And um, tune in, not tomorrow, so it's going to be every other day, and I'll be back again with another Easter-themed tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.